In this video, I'd like to take you through the camera settings that I use for outdoor sports photography. Now, I'm very aware that everybody has their own settings on their camera. Uh, they may well have learned some settings from a camera club or from Google. Uh, they may well have learned them themselves. These are my settings, uh, and uh, I'd advise you to uh, have these as a default setting uh, in your camera and try them out on your next outdoor sports photography. Um, I will say in advance that I don't really care what sort of camera you have, whether it's a Canon, a Nikon, Fujifilm, Sony, whatever it happens to be. Uh, I use a Canon 7D Mark II uh, for my outdoor sports photography, uh, but this video uh, really can be catered for any type of make uh, or model of camera. I'm going to be using two main modes on the camera. And what I mean by the modes is the modes that are set from the dial on the top of the camera. The two main modes I'm going to be using are manual, uh, which is just a full manual mode, and shutter priority mode. Uh, this is marked as TV on a Canon or S on a Nikon. The very first thing you need to do is to look at your camera and look at the ISO settings. You need to understand whether your camera supports auto ISO. Uh, you can do that by checking the menu on the back of the camera, as I'm doing here. You'll see that my camera supports auto ISO. If your camera supports auto ISO, then this video, you can look at the settings for uh, manual mode and also for shutter priority mode. If your camera does not support auto ISO, please fast forward through the manual mode and go straight to shutter priority. The first thing that we're going to do is run through the primary settings for both manual mode and shutter priority mode. Following that, I'll run through the secondary settings. It's really important that you look at the secondary settings as well as these primary settings, which I'm going to go through now. The first thing you're going to do is turn your camera into full manual mode. So turn the dial to the M. Next, we're going to set our shutter speed at 1 over 1,250th of a second, which is displayed as 1250. And this is a perfect setting for freezing most action uh, from uh, outdoor sports events. The next thing we're going to set is our aperture, sometimes called f-stop. We're going to set this value at 4.5, which gives us a good balance between the subject that we're taking being in focus and a nice blurry background. Next, we're going to set our ISO at auto. We went through this earlier on in the video. Basically, setting our ISO at auto gives us a great flexibility uh, for getting all of our shots uh, correctly exposed. What we're doing is we're telling the camera to uh, choose the correct ISO, which will give us a correctly exposed photo with the shutter speed and the aperture that we've set. This is really important for us for outdoor sports shooting because the sun can move behind clouds, it can get darker or very much brighter as the sun comes out. We want each one of our photos to be correctly exposed and auto ISO enables great flexibility in doing this. It really cuts down any work that you might need to do in post-processing to lighten or darken images. And that's it for the primary settings for shooting in manual mode. However, we're not quite there. You must continue watching this video to get to the secondary settings, which are very important as well. The first thing we're going to do is turn our mode dial to TV on a Canon or S on a Nikon, which means shutter priority. We're going to set our shutter speed to be exactly the same as we did uh, in the manual mode, which is 1 over 1,250. Next, we're going to set our ISO at 800, and this will give us great flexibility to be able to take photos in slightly darker cloudy conditions or in bright sun conditions. You'll notice in shutter priority mode that we don't set an aperture. And the reason for that is that the camera actually chooses the aperture based on the shutter speed that we have and based on the ISO that we've set. The camera will try and correctly expose the photo uh, by choosing the correct aperture with the settings that we've made. So these secondary settings are very important and should be set in the same way whether you're using manual mode or shutter priority. In this section, we're going to go through auto white balance, 
exposure compensation, high-speed shutter release, continuous autofocus, metering mode, and autofocus mode. There are a number of options for auto white balance as shown on the screen here. You should select AWB Auto White Balance. Next is exposure compensation. And you can see here when we have the dial set or the point set on zero, it means that the photo is correctly exposed. If the number is below, then it's darker than it's correctly exposed and higher is overexposed. We want to set our exposure compensation right in the middle at zero. The next item to set is high speed shutter release. So down here, continuous high speed shooting. We can either have slow options or uh, silent options, but we want the fastest option possible. We want to take as many photos as possible uh, when I hold down the, uh, the shutter release button. The next item is called Continuous Autofocus, which on a Canon is called AI Servo. In here there are a number of options, but you definitely want your camera set on AI Servo. What this will do is the camera will autofocus immediately before every shot that it takes. So if you're taking a series of shots in rapid succession, the camera will automatically focus each time just before it, shut, it does the shutter release. Setting the correct metering mode is really important as it tells the camera what to look at in the frame to understand how to correctly expose the photo. There's a number of different metering modes, evaluative, partial, spot metering and centre weighted average. We want to select partial metering. One of the other items that you should set is your um, quality of photos. So it's very important when you're doing sports photography to not use raw settings, just use JPEG. You'll find that raw settings uh, take up too much uh, memory uh, space in your camera and uh, you'll run out of uh, space uh, on your uh, cards uh, during the day. So just set high quality uh, JPEG settings. In the final section of this video, we're going to cover a really important section on autofocus points. Now, autofocus is something that a lot of people do get wrong or don't fully understand on their camera. And it's really important that you understand how to use your focus system of your camera correctly and what options it gives you. Now, many cameras have different options uh, around their autofocus system. Your camera may well have less autofocus points or more autofocus points. It may have a different type of AF point selection as I'm scrolling through here. It may have different options. We'll go through this camera's options and I suggest that you uh, read the manuals or, or look at some YouTube videos about the specific autofocus settings of your particular camera. Firstly, let's look at the different types of modes that we've got for autofocus. So right at the right hand side here, we have a very large selectable area with a single point in the middle, uh, which is looking at um, automatically selecting uh, one of those focus points based on what the camera wants to select as its autofocus. When we move to the next one down, it gives us a slightly smaller region, but still quite large. It's a third of the camera's uh, sensor looking at that. And as we move further down, it gives us smaller and smaller regions until we get to a single AF point at the bottom here. Now, when we move back to the right hand side, we definitely do not want the camera choosing our autofocus point for us. We want to tell the camera what autofocus point we want. So as we move down here, we could move right to the left hand side and we could choose a single point here. But this makes it quite difficult for us with moving subjects to actually get the focus point right each time. The subject may well move around and that focus point may well move off the subject that we're trying to photograph. So I like to choose an autofocus point which is what we call an expandable AF area. Essentially what this means is the camera tries to focus on the center point uh, of, the, uh, of the cross here, but it will also take the focus from a number of points surrounding it uh, that you can use 
uh, to make sure that your autofocus point is on the subject, but it's as flexible as possible for moving subjects. So I'm going to select this AF expanding mode for my settings. Now you'll see that I can actually move this point around on the screen as well. So I can actually move this to any portion of my AF area. I like to select an area, usually this is right in the middle, I like to select an area which is slightly up from middle. And the reason for that is that the focus point uh, at that stage is usually on the face of the person that I'm trying to take. And getting the face in focus is really important. So I like to have my autofocus point just up from center. In addition, on this particular camera, I can set a focus point for landscape uh, photography. So I can set it for the camera being orientated in this way. And I can also set it for the camera being orientated in portrait mode. So that I can set the autofocus point up here, for example, or perhaps one down from there, so that I can quickly move the camera between landscape and portrait and have my focus point exactly where I want to in each one of these two situations. So that's a really quick introduction to the autofocus system uh, of my camera, uh, how I set the autofocus points and how I set the autofocus mode of my camera. I'd thoroughly recommend uh, that you learn about the autofocus system of your camera so that you can get the best out of it and get every single photo as sharp as possible. That's it for this video. I hope it's been really useful for you to be able to have some default settings to go to outdoor sports shooting with your camera and choose between either your manual uh, or your shutter priority settings.